back with another episode of the Youth Ministry Booster Podcast. My name is Zach Work and hang out in the garage with my friend, me? No? Jo- jo- this is Josh White, everybody. Josh White in the garage. How are you, buddy? I'm good, dude. How are you? Dude, so good to see you. So good to have you. Uh, no, we are not related. Real quick for the camera. Nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. But a little bit related in, in the Lord. But uh, that's right. Uh, this is my buddy, my brother, Josh. This is my brother, Josh White. That's, <laughs> that's right. What's that's up, right. man? How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We are glad that you are here. Uh, we're still on Chadcation, uh, and so we have some guests in the garage. And so today, reaching out to a Tulsa friend who's bringing the wisdom <laughs> and the experience and adjusting all of our pay raises. Executive <laughs> Pastor Josh, the executive pastor. Yeah, it, now, now, I do have a question. Is okay. this the first time an executive pastor has been on the Youth Ministry Booster podcast? It, it, it is the first time that an executive pastor has been on the podcast while they were executive. Some have gotcha. gone on to gotcha. greatness to do many That's things. Fair. That's fair. Uh, but you have returned I, from the mountain. I will say, <laughs> I, you, when you when you sent me the text, yeah. it's time. It's time. I was like, I, was, I, was, like, was, I was, the like, text was like, it's time. Well, I was like, for lunch <laughs> or coffee or... Or to reply to the last text that you never replied right. to. Sorry, five or, months ago. But, but, I, but then I was a little offended when you told me why. And I was like, well, now I feel old. <laughs> like, I can still wear a hat backwards, man. Like, come on. You're cool, man. Rolling in the flannel. No, uh, Josh, we go way back. We've been ministry friends for at least a decade, yep. if mm, maybe a little longer. We're getting there. Um, and again, Tulsa area, friends that are local coming to share. Um, but one of the things that I've loved about you, and we'll get into some of your ministry story in a little bit, is that we've been both ministers and also dads together, too. So real quick apologies. Sorry that my youngest answered the door shirtless. Uh, it's okay. Mine's probably shirtless <laughs> right now. So <laughs> you're in safe yeah. company. So so red bearded uh, men trying to raise sons in a crazy world. Uh, but yes, uh, pretty much at our house afternoon when it gets Hot outside. That's right. Gideon's just shirtless and sometimes forgets when he answers the door. Man, like, oh. I'll just tell you right now, you're, you're lucky he was clean. <laughs> I got, that, that was the, the, the biggest surprise because mine, you're I like, mean, hey, bud. you should have seen mine last night. I was, I mean, he's out playing. We've got a little green area across from the house, yeah. you know, and uh, the neighborhood kids are digging a hole in it. Yeah. And I don't know how the homeowners association feels about it, but <laughs> they're digging a hole. And so he's out there by himself. And I walked out there and I'm like, what is he doing? He's like, like planking on the top of his his, oh. his dirt mound, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, okay, that's dirt. And He's then a I realized, wheel bridge. <laughs> well, well, and then I realized it had rained, oh. and so he walks over and he's just covered head to toe in mud that does mud. not look like mud. Oh, mm, mm, that boy, good that good Oklahoma dad. red clay mud. Yeah, oh, yeah, boy dad stories, in man. <laughs> boy dad stories. We are we are packed with them. Because you got three, fourteen, I've got three, fourteen, 11, eleven, and seven. Yeah, so like you're you're living into the throes of. Middle school and preteen ministry, yep. and so yeah, but well, uh, youth ministry friend. One of the things that's been so fun is to get to know you through different churches and positions. Like friendship with you has been great because we literally have been friends in ministry even beyond like jobs or roles. Yep. Like I feel like sometimes you'll have a friend in ministry where you're like, well, you know, I used to meet coffee with this guy or whatever. But change of churches, change of roles, and you're now serving from youth ministry to executive pastor. Yep, that's right. Uh, and so part of what we wanted to ask you about is a little retrospective <laughs> on your time in student ministry. Uh, but before we get to where you are now, dude, take us into like what got you into student ministry. Because one of the things that I know to be true for you is that you didn't start out as like the Bible college kid who had that summer camp. Church was a thing, uh, was but a thing. you were not the summer camp candidate into the yeah take us on the journey yeah so uh i, I like to joke that god plays a long game okay because i and, and <laughs> don't, case he, don't point, he do it <laughs> uh and, and i honestly i got started in ministry late and so like yeah. you've known me the entire time i've been in mm-hmm. ministry and that's mm-hmm. kind of i started in ministry and that next season we, we did a youth ministry event together yep. and so that's kind of how all this got kicked off and so you've never really not known me out of ministry well that's why it's hard to remember because it's like oh you know that this this isn't he did other stuff but i've always known yeah. you as the guy doing that yeah, yeah, yeah. so my wife Wife, uh, she she jokes that she married a pharmacist. Okay, like when, when graduated high school. I was promised school, a pharmacist. She, yeah. she was like, we got married, and then three months later, I was like, I can't do this the rest of my life, and oh. I started digging ditches. And so, worked for a utility excavation contractor for like eight years. After I think we that, we know where your son gets it. Man. Uh, he does. Like, He's that, he, that comes by. Hold on, he, Dad, before we throw judgment I, around. I was <laughs> muddy before he was muddy. That's exactly right. And so I. Uh, That's yeah. what I, I wanted you to go out and critique his hole. That's <laughs> I wanted you to go out and be like, actually, my man. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I I would lie if I told if if I didn't say that I hadn't gone out and creaked it a little yeah, bit. I mean, like, like, yeah. let's work on your technique, bro. It, like, you can it. dig a bigger hole if you do this. Like, let's, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, man, I... I so uh, big farmer to big digging? That's right. 
<laughs> yeah, I dug ditches for eight years. Uh, I've got like a, literally, like some people joke yeah, about that. My, yeah. Like my daddy would be like, "Oh yeah, man, if you want this, you can." Oh but no, you oh, literally no. dug ditches. I can dig a hole. That's okay. exactly okay. right. With a shovel, excavation equipment, like all that kind of good stuff. We drove big trucks. It was a man job, right? Oh, yeah, you know, yeah if, ever there, if ever there was a man job, <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. So leave your boots uh, outside. It was a great experience. Yeah. Uh, felt like I needed to go back to school, and so I got a, a degree in environmental health and safety management from NSU. Okay, I know, right? Okay. I know, right? It's a uh, <laughs> dig ditcher twice educated oh, my man yeah, my yeah, man okay that's right, that's right and so uh during that time you know i was serving at a church yeah. uh just doing volunteer stuff yeah. you know I, I they often joked uh to my dismay that I'm, i was the official unpaid associate oh uh, so i'd spend you know 50 hours working secular job and then come and spend 15 20 hours just because i loved it like i'd go to camp every year take a week off without pay uh this was so you were this like was one of the good kids. ones oh you were like well, you were like one of the ones that we all uh, wanted. Yeah, I would. I would love to have five of me. Okay, is that, is that narcissistic to say? Like, can I, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit of considering, like, just knowing how much value. But I think also that's probably a superpower of knowing what got you that level of involved. Because I think sure. for some folks, it's always like, how do I get more sure out of my folks? Sure. Or, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and so, like, I was always, always volunteering, doing something. Uh, and in that time, like, felt the Lord called me to ministry, uh, yeah. you know, went through the whole thing. It wasn't a, it was like one of the last years they did uh, YEC in Norman. Like, I just remember oh, yeah, yeah. we went, I was volunteer for the student event, and one of our interns, they, they said, hey, we, we want everybody to, uh, who feels called to ministry right now to stand up, we want to pray for you. And the kid next to me stood up, and I just remember thinking, like, that should be me. Like, oh. that should be me. And so I'm like... You got convicted what, at the what student is event? This? I did. Okay. I was I was a the leader. The Lord moving. Oh, okay. That's exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. exactly right. Well, so, do it. Uh, so I, you know, I, I didn't stand up. I didn't stand up because I was like, man, I need to wrestle with this. Yeah, I was yeah, raised yeah. Uh, in church. My dad was in ministry. Yeah. Every different facet of ministry that you can. So, in, in a lot of ways, I felt like I was running from it. Hindsight, mm. uh, I don't think I was, and I don't question the Lord's timing yeah. in any of that. But um, didn't feel the need to jump right into anything full time at the moment. Felt like God had work to do in my heart and, and pr to prepare me for. Uh, and so spent, uh, still continued digging ditches, you yeah. know, finishing my bachelor's degree. And okay. um, the guy that I was serving with uh, at the church in Bixby uh, that I was at, he left and they asked me to take his spot. And yeah. so I was like, wait, you're going to, you're going to pay me to do this? Mm. Heck yeah. Yeah. Like wait, sign me up. I was already going to camp on vacay days. Now that gets to be my actual vacay. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Let's go. Camp is not a vacation. That's right. We're going to cut that from the podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, camp is not a vacation. I don't care where you go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, a little, 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 little youth pastor. We're just trying to uh, weed out the executive pastors that might be listening. That's exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, executive yeah. pastors that don't listen at all. That was a test. That's right. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey. <laughs> and, and so, like, you know, I think it's pretty fascinating because I see, I saw the ministry from a volunteer's perspective yeah. in a lot of ways. Like, uh, as a deeply committed one. Like, yeah, not even, like, yeah. half casual. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with some sensitivity to asking volunteers, I think it really hindered me in a lot of ways okay. as a student pastor because I was like, I don't, I know what it takes. I don't want to ask people mm, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and so but then it was like the lord just had given me that perspective and so leaned into it it's like you can do this like you guys can you guys can jump in full bore and just go to town okay. uh and so um yeah yeah starting ministry uh and never looked back man. okay so tell us a little bit because we we talk about especially with some of our guests these last few episodes there always seems to be a season that happens again it's been a decade or more w where was was there like a moment or a pivot because i think everybody always starts like full flush all things like has there been a, a, a notable pivot or season in your life maybe a couple even where like ministry got refined in a really key way like what were some of the things not necessarily i mean we'll talk about some life wisdom stuff later but just like for someone that had been doing it for a decade what are some of the things that became maybe not initially the most important but like evidently the more you did it the more you're like man this is this is the thing that i've got to be doing Sure. So a uh, pivotal moment, I think, would have been in the transition from that church that I was at. I've been serving there for eight years, six years, volunteering. Volunteering into staff. Two years. So a lot That's of relational right. equity, a lot of history. Yeah. yeah. And so the transition from there to where I'm at currently, Arrow Heights, I've been yeah. there for eight years. Uh, it's a fantastic place. They pay me to say that. Yeah. Uh, and so, or, or I, I pay uh, me to say I, that. I, I, I get paid to say that. I get paid to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Say that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can cut that too. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, I think in that transition, really, uh, one, it, it honed 
just just what the call was for me. Mm. Uh, because, uh, I, you know, the first two years, I, I'd already been there volunteer. I knew the kids, knew the church. Yeah. Uh, it's such a special, special place uh, for us as a family. Um, and, and so I, I didn't, I stepped into that role, but in so many ways I was handicapped and couldn't own it uh, mm. because I was always, I'd always been there. Yeah. And so not, Prof- not that, not that you're town a little bit. Yes. yes. Or, there, there you, was, you were almost too known to know different yeah. or whatever the yeah. phrase might be. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'd been so a part of the ministry leading up to that point. It, it was my ministry. Like, mm. like, and so I hadn't really convictionally been able to lead in mm. any areas. Mm. Not, it's not a bad thing. We just You had had to make the big change because yeah. it was always like your thing. Yeah. That's yeah. that's different when you have to like make a change that oh, somebody else had been doing something. Dude. Those first edits that weren't your call. Yeah. <laughs> well it, well and, and and here's the reality of that. And and I think I really see the Lord working in all of that because the like probably three months before I I got the opportunity to talk to Arrow Heights. Um, I, I had pitched a, a, a change in programming for the student ministry that was completely different. Mm. Uh, felt like the Lord was leading me that direction uh, and, and leading us as a church that direction. And, and I got met with like, there was this just anxiety from all our, ch- our, our leadership, not About even not, changes you're not church leadership, but my adult leaders, my oh, sponsor, help, okay. my volunteers. Uh, and so there was, there was some pushback and I was like, well, I was starting to question. I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And then, I, and it's funny because I was talking to you the night before Arrow Heights <laughs> yep, called me. Yep. And you're like, are you live for here? I remember it like, <laughs> va- like I just I, remember standing in the parking like lot. You were. I don't well, know. it was comfortable, right? And, which which was my yeah. downfall, right? Right, right, right? But we're standing in the parking lot after this, after our, our D now. And you're like, are you live for And I'm like, man, I'm going to be here for 30 years. The next day. <laughs> the next day. The <laughs> next day, I get a call. Uh, and they're like, hey, we want to talk to you about this. And I even told my my senior pastor at the time, I said, hey, man, Arrow Heights called me. Uh, I'm going for the free lunch like, yeah. just to, I, I, just I to connect. Learn. Don't worry just about it. just want to see what they're doing, you know, oh like it's something. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, especially but, across town, too. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it wasn't that far. It wasn't yeah, far enough. Yeah, far enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. Four miles yeah. one way as yeah, opposed yeah. to the other. But um, what, what's beautiful about that, and, and I didn't know uh, really the reasons why the transition happened in a lot of ways. It was more like the opportunity came, okay. uh, didn't feel the need to say no. And, and really we just prayed, Lord, until you take it off the table, we're going to walk in that direction, my okay. wife and I. Um, and so we, we did, we walked through that transition. It was a good, good transition, both sides. Uh, when I stepped into that role at Arrow Heights, they were hungry for change. Mm. Uh, they, and so I was like, I have this idea. And yeah. they were like, let's do the thing. Do your idea. And okay. I was like, thank you, Lord. Like, yeah. you know, and, and so it was really a beautiful, beautiful transition. And the ministry at Riverview, like, yeah. s- excelled because I left. Like, it's yeah. that's as much of an ego hit as that is. It's like, y- you've got to understand that the God is working on both sides of that yeah. equation. Uh, and it was just, it was just, inter- and so when you talk about pivotal times, I think that is probably one of the most memorable that, yeah. I, that I can really tangibly see God working yeah. uh, to, to bring me to that and hone and sharpen a lot of what I was doing in ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, what was the next part of your question? I think it was... Well, but that's, but I think I want to I just kind of punch in on that though, because I do think for some folks that maybe in this season are coming out of a position mm-hmm. into another position or out of a season to another season, man, please be careful, men and women, to not miss what could be learned. Yeah. Um, that that's one thing. I you are not going to be somewhere forever, and I, that's what I love about your story is that you'd kind of been like chalked up, like I'm just going to be here forever. I volunteered here, I served here. Complacent it, again, yeah. great church of means, great location. Yeah. Loved your whole family was loved, and so you had just kind of framed it up in one way. And then sometimes the the teacher of experience for the thing that you could only learn by being somewhere else. Yeah, that's exactly and that's right. and that's for anybody that's contemplating a job change or experiencing a job change or even thrust into a job change. Man, the only way that it could be 100% negative is that there was nothing learned from it mm. from from what this new thing might bring and if you're not taking notes or whatever along the way, don't don't miss don't miss the opportunity for what the change could bring. I think yeah. it's an important piece. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. And, and don't miss the blessings that can come, even just as a family. Like, that you might be surprised like, by. Yeah, and, yeah. and there's there's small things in those transitions, too, that uh, if you're paying attention, you can see how the Lord's working leading up to that. Like even six months before 
it was even an opportunity. Like our, our kids had gone to Arrow Heights as pre-K. Like it okay. was close to the house. Okay. And so, and, and kids so were driving already away, in the pre-K of the next Lara church. and I yeah. would, would leave and we, we'd go Friday day date, you know, yep. had Fridays yep. off. So we'd drop the kids off at, at we and uh, we're driving out of the parking lot one day and just randomly, like everything's fine at Riverview. Everything, yeah. like we're happy, we're loving, loving what God's doing. Uh, and she says, y- you know, if, if we weren't on staff at Riverview, I think Arrow Heights would be a cool church to there. try out. And I was like, Yo. that's a weird thing to say. Yeah, and then just yeah. kind of walked on, like yeah. didn't even, didn't even yeah. engage. And then six months later, it's like, here we are. <laughs> and so it's uh, don't miss those opportunities because mm-hmm. I think God's doing something bigger uh, even when we're not watching. Mm-hmm. So, Okay, uh, opportunities, changes, yeah. student ministry. Yeah. You have been a part of the thing of working with teenagers for the next generation in various capacities for almost 20 years what's changed and what hasn't changed like what are the things and i ask it because we're in a really delicate chapter of ministry we talked about it with our folks longtime listeners know uh that i'm adamant that there's like three or four key years that shift in youth ministry yeah. there's those early 2000s of post 9 11 youth ministry mm-hmm. there's the 2011 2012 of like cell phone ministry 2016 of social media ministry and then now 2020 of covid ministry so there's some external influences, but as someone who's thoughtful and careful and creative in ministry, what's changed and what hasn't changed for teenagers? Man, I, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing that I have perceived just in the last um, last 10 years, decade of ministry, I think is uh, you don't have as many casual students showing up. Okay, and, and so and that's that's a no positive social, and no, a negative. Less socializing. <laughs> less less socializing. Yeah, they're, socialized they're there. student ministry. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, yeah, it's yeah. not as convenient to be mm. a part of a church. Mm. And, and this goes. This is across the board. This isn't just student ministry. This isn't just adults or kids. Kids don't necessarily have a choice in it. But um, I, I think the, really the biggest shift that I've seen. You know, and you've got all the the Barna research and all that saying people are leaving the church in droves. Well, I think the reality is people are just being honest about. Mm their convictions and their calling. Yeah. Like, like we, we, they, see, they were barely, they probably weren't even like wholehearted there anyway. Like, yeah. they, they, like their, their butts may have left the pew, but, yeah. but they, they, they probably weren't committed either way. Yeah. 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 And, and so I think, I think that's probably been the biggest shift, both, both the positive and negative. Cause you want everybody there that you can get, yeah, of course. you want everybody to be in a position where they can hear the gospel preached yep. and, and see the multitude chi- changed yeah. lives. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, you know, the, the kids that I have at Arrow Heights had, have still have, still have different capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, hey, I know. Aren't for they the always most, yours? They're always they're mine. Always they're my be, kids. They're always going to be yours. They're my yeah. kids. And, and really, the transition got weird whenever I realized that they actually could have been my kids. Oh. Like they could be yeah. my kids. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you, 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 cross you, you a, do it long enough. You talk about like, pivotal moments. Oh, yeah, of like, yeah, yeah. oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not cool. Uh, yeah, when uh, you go from big brother to like like father figure, you're like, oh yeah, yep, yeah, all right, okay, yep, okay. yep. <laughs> yep. So um, I, I think that's that's really one of the, been one of the most. Uh, it's it's slightly disheartening because okay. you don't have the numbers, right? Yeah. We 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 see numbers so quickly. Well, but say it for those in the back. Everybody's ministry is smaller in attendance than it used to be. Yeah, across the board. Absolutely. I, I think I think there is something to that. Like th- there is a settling of a new normal that. Again, you, and it's not that your ministry may have even less effectiveness or energy. It may just be that that like that loose socializing, social light, uh, bandwidth circle radius may be different. Yeah, no, no, you're exactly right. And, and what I love about that is, if in one sense it frees you up to hone in on the kids that you have. Yeah, uh, and so uh, I love seeing kids walk in the door, and you're like. I know they want to be here. Yeah. You know, it's not just their, their the parents are dropping them off, saying we're gonna go go on a date for two hours. Yes. Uh, it's like like right. these kids are showing up and they're they're participating. Yeah. Like it's in a sea of opportunities. Yeah, you chose this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I think that's one of the biggest shifts. I mean, you, we could talk all day long about you know mental health stuff. And yeah. I just finished uh, Abigail Schreier's Bad Therapies. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, yeah. It was, so enlightening and yeah. so helpful just to have that perspective. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a whole other probably a whole other podcast. But yeah. um, I, I think um, I think that's been the biggest shift uh, okay. that I've seen personally okay. at Arrow Heights. And, well, and I know that, it's different. But that can be a pressure on a youth minister that was, sure. again, so now in this role, 
Um, one of the conversations that we hope comes out of this podcast is continuing conversations with our senior leadership mm. about some of these realities yeah. uh, for the ways in which things have changed, acknowledging that there is change and ministry will be done in a different way because of these changes. Yeah. Uh, but for those that, because you now have youth and kids staff that report to you, Pastor. No, no, or, actually, or, or the not, way we, not, the not way we separate okay. dynamics okay. is all ministerial staff report to our lead pastor. Okay. I get everybody else. So. But, you, but you're but you now weighing in on other ministries from yeah. a different angles. Oh, absolutely. And so well, there's something, and to, something to you, like, how do we grade things when sure. you sit with senior pastor? Yeah, well, yeah. and, and I've got I've to I've be cautious about that, right? Like, this transition has been so enlightening to me yeah stepping out of the role staying in the same church yeah having to watch somebody new come in and and they, he's got my kids caretake your he's got field my kids, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> like uh, uh, but but really the perspective i've tried to take and i've tried to explain to to him and he's doing a fantastic job yeah. if he's listening to this like he's, he's doing a fantastic yeah, he's, he's job killer. uh but I, i've really tried to um Hold it loosely. Okay. Like this is not yeah. my my job to lead this ministry mm -hmm. in the way that I've led it in the past. Yeah. I can lead from a more of a support role, which I love. Yeah. Being able to just blow wind into his sails and hopefully uh, encourage as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, and give as much input as what he's willing to take. Yeah. Uh, and not not more that I want to give. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of take a step back, but. Uh, but I think it's been really sweet, mm. and, and so like I, I don't. I hope I've done it well, mm. uh, but I want to. I want feedback on yeah. from him, from other leadership on if I've done it well. Done so, it well, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. What's uh, what's something um, if you could go back again? You're doing the new thing now, uh, executive pastoring. But like for the retrospective, for those of us uh, that are still in it or hoping to be in it for a long time, like what is the wisdom you would give someone who is starting out? Uh, one of the things that our team has noticed is that there's a growing number of new folks in ministry, and many are called up from the ranks of mm. those that are already a part of the church, mm -hmm. either at an uh, an intern, interim, or like volunteer level. Like your story is so near and dear to me because as we go out and do training events and we sit and we have special conferences that for those that are new to ministry, I see a bunch of Josh Whites that are like, I was teaching and now I'm doing this or like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I was doing military stuff and then now I'm back and I look for a job. I love this church and they hired me. And so I just, w what are the things that you would give advice, especially for someone that may be new to this and wasn't like Bible college seminary pipeline one, two, three. Yeah. So, uh, hear me and hear me now. <laughs> Stay in student ministry as long oh, as you can. As long as you can. As long as you can. Uh, that's where all the fun is. It like, is. And, it th is. and that's true. Like, I, I, I say that jokingly, but there's some truth to uh, just the benefit that comes from longevity. Mm. And, and not just longevity in that ministry, but longevity at the same church. Uh, and so I get there's reasons that shifts happen. I yeah. get that there's uh, different callings that come and people make moves. But I, I think... Stepping into student ministry, it, you've got to be giving it 100%. And mm -hmm. it was there was never any other option for me when I started. Mm -hmm. And of course, I came into it late. And so, yeah. like, like I've got to I've got to have that perspective too. I wasn't yeah. a, a high school senior yeah. that graduated and just yeah. got thrown into it. Yeah. You know, trial by fire. We hope he doesn't kill somebody. <laughs> Nineteen running camp, twenty two running ministry. <sighs> yeah, dumb. like yeah, it, yeah. that. That's that scares me as an executive pastor. <laughs> uh, but like. <laughs> Like, I think, like, when I started ministry, I, I had two kids already. Mm. Uh, I, I walked into it knowing what my priorities needed to be. Mm. Uh, and so, like, you know, the, the, the saying I, I use often is you've got to focus on your first ministry. And so mm. uh, stay in it as long as you possibly can. Yeah. Second thing, focus on your family. Mm. Like, your family is your first ministry. Yeah. Your, your wife and your kids. You can find another church. Uh most of the time, yeah. uh, but you can't mm. you can't rebuild your family, you and that. so um, so make that your priority. And hopefully, you're in a church that uh, that has that as their priority. I think yeah. if you go to any church, you, you need to ask those questions. Like, what what is what is the expectation of my family? What's the expe expectation of my wife? Mm. Uh, and so, uh, stay as long as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care of your first ministry, and then like convictionally, when when one of the things that I um, I wish I would have done and focused on a little bit better was finding ways to integrate our students with the rest of the church. Okay. And so, uh, we, we talk, yeah, we pre, uh, pre show we were talking a little bit about, it, about the changing nature of worship ministry and how, uh, 20 years ago, the songs we sing in student ministry may have been different than those that we sang at like 
you know, Sunday worship, but the gap has narrowed. Yeah. And that that's got to affect it. That's got to affect and, it. And so. I think I, I think that is so encouraging to me too. Yeah. Uh, because like Hopeful we change. we <laughs> unintentionally, I think I think, and, and I totally get the heart. Uh, I was there. I was raised in it, but. Uh, we we have unintentionally built two churches on the mm. same campus. Yeah, uh, you've got you've got adult ministry, eighteen and up. They go to church on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights. This is our jam, man. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm trying to stick away, stay away from Gen Z lingo's <laughs> to sound too much like a dad, but uh, it we can do that. Like you can make a Wednesday night service that is just awesome yeah. and kids are going to want to come back to it but are they showing up on Sunday mornings mm. uh, and so like one of, the, one of the things that I've done convictionally is anything we do on Wednesday night uh, I, I fight to keep it from competing with what we're doing on Sunday okay. mornings as like, like an A-B test yeah, or whatever yeah, that, that, that's that whatever the, we do in students is something specifically and uniquely for students and not in competition with yeah, yeah. yeah because uh, if we say we are uh, discipling and leading the future church or the current church, depending on how you want to look at it. uh, Why would we not Mm. match what we're doing on Sunday mornings? And I'm not saying if if you've got just, I I get it. I get the perception of Sunday mornings oftentimes can be, it's boring. A little sluggish to change. But but here's the deal. You you will win over church leadership, your lead pastor, worship pastor. If you're saying, Hey, what we're doing on Sunday mornings, it's okay. I want to affirm that on Wednesday nights. How okay. can I be a part of what we're doing on Sunday mornings so that our Wednesday nights can match? Yeah. And so you can bring some of that, that those new ideas into Sunday mornings. I mean, you got to be cautious with that. You know, yeah. we're, I mean, we're, we're very convictional with how we do stuff at, at Arrow Heights uh, in a good way, I think. But I think there's, there's ways that you can translate that to Wednesday night that affirm what you're doing on Sunday mornings as opposed to compete with them. Mm. Uh, and so that's been, that, that would be what I encourage uh, any new youth pastor, okay. a, any new student minister, student leader, whatever, ha- find ways that you can uh, connect students to that Sunday morning worship because yeah. that's what you're graduating them to. Mm. Uh, and so um, that would be one thing. Okay. Um, let's see. T- tell us a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, now that you're on this side of stuff, what are some ways that you would encourage youth ministers to connect or communicate with senior leadership more? I think that's one of those now kind of sitting on the other side of the table um, I'm not sure how you all have your like sessions of like pastoral team and like, executive team and stuff, but like we hear story after story that like a youth minister maybe feels like unheard or didn't communicate enough or like, man, I thought things were going great. And then I had a meeting with my, my boss. Like what are some of the ways just like internally to the ministry or, or the, the operations of the church that you would encourage youth ministers to not do differently, but things to watch out for, or maybe some unknowing blind spots. Now, having sat on both sides of the table, I think uh, I think there there's something to be said. You said communication, right? Um, uh, well, and this applies to student ministry when you're, you're counseling kids, talking to kids about how to relate to parents. Uh, they're in a phase of building trust, okay. right? Yeah, High school yeah. kids, y- your freedom is directly proportional to to how much trust you have with your parents or how much your parents trust you. Uh, and I think the same goes with student pastors. We, we have this uh, knack for thinking of the crazy ideas and just uh, flash in the pan. Like we are, we think this is going to be awesome. And it, then it falls flat. And really, if the that had been communicated up the chain, which I don't even like that term, like that, and that, that's a whole other beef that I've got philosophically. Like if you're a student pastor, you're one of the pastors of the church and there should not be this this hierarchy uh, mm, that yeah. we have we have established and that's that's a whole other that that is not for this <laughs> podcast but if you're there yeah if, as you're, mid- if, yeah, you're, yeah, if you're fighting yeah. middle management i totally yeah, know yeah, where you are yeah zach can give you my phone number let's go get <laughs> we'll coffee connect, yeah. you can cry on my shoulder i've been there uh but but i think they keep wanting me to write these emails but i don't feel like anybody even reads them <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't uh so like uh so build trust like like find ways that you can communicate with your Senior leadership. God, I hate that term. Sorry, it, we, executive we, we, leader. We, we, I know because it's know. different. Because some people have like a senior pastor. Yeah. Some people have an elder board. Some well, people have like says the guy the, with the title the executive. executive. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know. I know. Sorry, you forgot your tie at home. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> uh, but but like I, I think there's ways that you can build trust. Uh, part of it is most often the guy that's in the lead uh, that is 
called to lead that church, sure. uh, has more experience sure. most of the time. Yeah. And so find ways that you can tap that. Yeah. Uh, like even if you don't take everything that they're trying to encourage you to do, like yeah. just, just try to build a relationship. Hear with them out. Them. Even if you don't yeah. heed it, hear them out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but also like communicate everything that you're doing. Like mm. even if they don't want to hear it, like at least you tried and, and you can only like, that's, that's one thing. Like you can take care of your side of the table. Yeah. Uh, you can't, dictate how they're going to respond you can't dictate how they're going to communicate but you can do the best thing that you can to communicate with them so that's an important word uh again we we made the joke about writing up the emails but sometimes those communication receipts of putting putting out the word uh, again it's it's the newsletter right like yes is everybody reading it no but was there a centralized place that information could be found yep. and man that seems really important for the busier that everybody gets, that you would be a consistent force of trustworthy communication. Yeah. It, it, don't, don't have the meetings always be on the back of the thing when something went wrong. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I think, uh, well, yeah, I could say a whole lot more. The same more. We could go. We could go hours. Oh, we're here. We're uh, here. No, I think. I think even just um, from a leadership side of things, like yeah. looking. Look, I almost said looking down. Zach, oh, yeah, pull me on. back from the ledge, bro. <laughs> this is, uh, see, I'm already putting myself in that uh-huh. position, and like, I'm probably going to hate me. Uh, in Josh, about this a year. table is round, buddy. We're, we're, round, we're all around exactly this table. Right. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I really hope that uh, churches more lean that direction eventually. Like, like it's from, from a leadership perspective, mm. like this, this round table discussion of, hey, we're all in this together. Like, yeah. it's teamwork. Yeah. Uh, and I get if you're in a huge church, that doesn't always work. I mean, you've got you've got a hierarchy that's you, know, you can't communicate to the many the same right. way that you can communicate to the few. Yeah. And so uh, take that into consideration. Arrow Heights is in a different context than other churches. And so if you're if you're about where we are, we've got four pastors, two yeah. ministers. Yeah. And we can all sit in the same room. Yeah. Two or three times a week and communicate, yeah. and it works. Yeah. Uh, that is that's you not can, every you can context. traverse the hallway. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. right. So. What, what is something, uh, again, what is something maybe that you would, this side of the table, 20 years of volunteering, lead in different places, where do you feel like some youth ministers put more energy than they should? Like, if you were going to, like, uh, as someone, workout oh, buddy, yeah. whatever, like, yeah. we're always looking for ways to trim, ma- yeah. maximize efficiency. Yeah. What What is some of the, not wasted effort, yep. but if we only have so much time, what are some of the maybe the the trim the fat things that folks either get maybe too worked up about? Yep. As someone who is one of us, yep. But seeing it from a different angle, yep. give us some yep. wisdom. And this is uh, <laughs> so I'll give you some wisdom from when you, I was you, in that you, position. In that position, but you've also known a bunch of us. And one yep. of the things that I love about the state of Oklahoma and the community of Tulsa. Yep. There is a daggum bunch of youth ministry folks, yep. and most of us are friends. And so we've all got a little bit of listening ear. So we oh, won't yeah. call out names, but just from yep. from the folks that we've seen, heard, and know. Yep. Help us trim the fat. Uh, so you're a camp guy. I love camp. You're a camp guy. I love I, camp. I, I, I'm not a camp guy. <laughs> like I, I love camp, and and I will I will agree with you that it is the most concentrated time yeah. that you'll have with your students yeah. over the course of the year. Yeah, it is a fantastic OJ opportunity. Concentrate. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a <laughs> such a fantastic opportunity to minister in a, in a confined space. Yep. Yeah. Right. But it should not be the thing. Mm. This is my opinion. Okay. And, and no, no, you can, I like, and you, I like, and you no, can hate I like it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and here's why. Uh, after camp, and I don't know, maybe maybe you've talked about this on the podcast. Like okay. after camp, to fresh. kids come back and they're like, that was so great. Let's make it like this all, all the, the time. time. And, and, and and you're just like, no. Like Christianity, like th- there's something it's to be real. said yeah, for yeah, living yeah. life in the mundane, knowing mm. how to follow Christ when things are just meh. Yeah. Like and, and pursuing him and attempting to delight in him in that context yeah. that's not in a camp setting. Yeah. Uh again, camp's great. Yeah. It's great. Uh but if you're gonna put all your eggs in one basket, I would say focus on the small. Okay. Like focus okay. on focus on what you've got going week in, week out, building relationships with your kids uh in a way that you're building trust with them so that whenever you don't even have to be pointing them to the gospel at that time, but you're, yeah. you're, you're building a relationship with them such that whenever stuff does go crazy yeah. at home, at school, work, whatever, they know who to trust. They know who they can come to to trust. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I would I would err on the side of focusing on the small, what you got going on at your local church. Make, making the most of the ordinary Absolutely. Time. And that's... Uh, and, and presenting that as yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. Be- because if, if we are always moving from event to event to event. I get it. 
I know there's event guys. <laughs> Again, some people do events so many weeks in a row that it actually becomes the regular thing. Maybe it's, so, it's, but, I then, don't know. but then are you competing with your morning <laughs> oh, worship? Yeah, see, here's see, your yeah, checks and yeah, balances, yeah, that's right? It, that's yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that would be probably the biggest impartation of wisdom that no, I can dump good. on people. Like, even if you do love camp, even if you focus on that and and you put the all big your eggs thing in that basket, or whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't don't neglect it yeah. uh, midweek. Yeah, uh, and so uh, that would be probably the biggest, or at least have enough in the tank that you're still excited about. Oh, maybe. absolutely! I think that's probably, man, um, one of the things that that is true time and again is that so much of this stuff, you know, bubbles over, overflows, and that yeah. usually most folks rise to meet your energy mm. uh, versus falling to you know. They, they, they fall to where you're at instead of rising or what, whatever the right terminology of flow is. But for yeah. so many, like, man, have enough in the tank that each week after week that the obedience to choose and to follow is still fresh and new. That's huge. Uh, for our liturgical friends, the ordinary part of the calendar is the biggest part of the wheel. That's right. The green is the largest slice of pie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. Or, yeah. you know, one, op- one option would be to make camp boring. Or make camp boring, yeah. Oh, hey, man, we call those retreats, and that's I love right. those, too. I love those, too, yeah. We, we almost did one together. That's right, that's it right. It did never work I, it out. It was, uh, you know... It was too boring. It was too boring. It was too boring. Yeah, nobody, we were too uh, bored with it before you even prepped right, it. That's right, that's we, right. We, we, we had hammocks, and we were ready. Yeah, we were just going to oh, literally, literally get away. We were literally going to get away. Yep. Uh, I do want to brag on you. That's one of my favorite things about you. Uh, you were the first person that I knew that had installed in their youth room hammock clips and so for your kiddos that were crunching right. granola that wanted a little this is like 2017 2018 oh yeah. Oh yeah. that you had installed like the d-rings or oh whatever yeah. that they could bring oh yeah. their, their enos or whatever yep. so just uh again sometimes the restful might be as creative as the energy so. well and we're not going to say what those were used throughout the week for <laughs> Uh, so there may have been some selfish Pastor motivation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, that's okay. I say it as the guy in charge. Now, yeah, so. you can do it. That's good. <laughs> not in charge. Not, not in charge. Uh, well, my brother, what, what is uh, on the way out? What, what is something uh, for the for the sake of student ministry? The reminders today for family and first ministry. To take us back to the beginning. The God God plays in the long game. What is a way that you would want us to remember that? Like, what is something from your story, from your time in ministry? Help remind us, um, or maybe maybe in your like, how 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 do you remind yourself um, that God plays in the long game? Man, I, I think we uh, had a question posed to me this week. You know, how, how does uh, a passage like Matthew seven twenty four through twenty seven? I think that the the houses on the sand on the mm-hmm. rock. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. does that prepare us for parenting? How does that prepare us to to become parents? And and one of the ways uh, I answered that question was the foundation you're laying right now prepares you for whatever ministry you're going to be doing five, 10 years down the road, whatever parenting you're going to be doing five, 10 years down the road. And so uh, focus now on the foundation convictionally that you feel the Lord is, is, is leading you to and have a long-term goal. Like, mm-hmm. like don't, don't just see ministry as uh, we, we have a tendency to, I have a tendency to be very reactive, uh, to be uh, flying by the seat of my pants. And, and the bad thing is I do it really well, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't think that's what God's called us to. And so the more proactive you can be in your own personal spiritual life, yeah. uh, the better pastor, minister, student ministry leader you're going to be. Mm. Uh, and so I think that that's really what the Lord's even been teaching me recently. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, in, in a position that uh, I've got a lot of spinning plates, uh, the more proactive from a foundational perspective that I can be, the better. Mm. So Love it, man. Well, for folks that wanted to connect with you more, you offered to throw out uh, coffee or whatever. What what are social or email or other connective ways for uh, folks to learn more about so you? So my my social handles are weird. <laughs> That's it's, okay. it's just Redbeard. Red you can, beard. Go, you can just, go to Zach. Golly, you got. How'd find, you get that one? Spotlight. I want that one. Well, it's weird. There's just threes. Redbeard? There's threes for the E's. Oh, okay. And a period, okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we, we can tag in the show notes too. But but Redbeard. Okay. That's right. Yeah, Redbeard yeah. uh, on Instagram. Yeah. I'm not on Snapchat. That's, That's okay. uh, It's not. I'm forty. It's a personal choice. That's yeah. right. I'm forty. I, I mean, I'm on there, but it's a generational choice. Yeah, I, yeah. I log on. Same for TikTok. That's right. It's just. I don't have to. I'm not in student ministry anymore, right? You can find the church website and hit me up. Email and. Zach eyes. can give you, you my number. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, and I will. I'm happy hey. to. No, I, my my <laughs> cell phone, like, I, and my wife is, she hates this, but like, I I, I don't mind. I give my yeah. cell phone to anybody. Ministry inbox. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So. Yeah. Well, brother, thank you so much. Always good to have not just friends, but brothers on the show too. So, yeah. uh, for everybody else, we'll see you back next week with more guests. Uh, snap.